idea what the contents are. And we'll see that Jerry has Nutter End, a Salumgar, an Obzon Charm, a Siege Rhino, a Flooded Strand, and a Bloodstained Mire. I like the discard spells having a little more texture to them in this format. Lancey's is kind of lame. I like pick the cards you want to be good against more than I just do this because why wouldn't you do this? Uh, I lose two. Oh, there's a cost. <laughs> I lose two life, okay. I like when duress is good in formats. Yeah. I also like it when it's not good. I just like that it exists and people can go to it when they think the metagame is spell heavy and when it's not, play something else. Here's Hangerback Walker. Thompson will sacrifice the Flooded Strand. He got himself a Prairie Stream. Going to get that mana online. And the thing about Thompson's build of this deck is if he's able to get to the late game, life is pretty good. But another thing that's really nice for Amazon Aggro, one of the cards that can never beat, Elspeth. Out of the format. Yep. We've said that quite a few times here this weekend. Radiant Purge the draw there for Thompson. What at Foothills the land? He'll pass the turn back over to Bridges. But I think this game from Thompson is where you might... This might be one of the games where you feel the loss of Corsair Crucifix. He's got a, a very powerful top end. He's got some removal spells, but no real card advantage he can go to. And he's got to make a lot of land drops to get to things like Slumgar. When Corsair's in the deck, it's not that hard to facilitate all that. It's going to be a lot more work this game. Basic Forest off the foothills. See what the follow-up is here. Thompson got to sacrifice Bloodstain Mire. A lot of fetches. That's what this one's all about. That's how his mana base is built. That and Battlelands, you won't find any Trilands here. Now that now this fetch for, for Thompson reveals a small achievement unlocked. That's the second basic. So now fetching going forward, he can focus just on getting Battlelands. It's time for a siege rhino. Hanging back Walker is going to grow up into a 2-2 there for Bridges, and we're going to head back Yusuf's way. Utter end the draw. Here's another hanging back Walker. No land there for Bridges to play, so he just has to pass the turn back over to Thompson. Looks like the Rhino is going to come into the red zone. Now keep in mind, cards in Jerry Thompson's hand right now. Utter end, Salumgar, the Drifting Death, Radiant Purge. A very, uh, I really, really like that play that we just saw from Bridges there. He blocked with the hanger back walker. He knows about Utter End in Thompson's hand. He knows that Thompson is probably waiting for Bridges to pump the hanger back walker so then he can exile it with Utter End. Bridges realizes this is the case and just says, okay, if you pass, I pass. Now you never get priority again and I get my two tokens. Bridges will draw. Den Protector is what he's found. Still stuck on lands though. It's like maybe some beatdowns in the air. Yep. Thompson will fall down to 18. Now there's a copy of Murderer's Cut. Kiss the Rhino goodbye. Over to Thompson we go. Makes for plenty of cards in the graveyard here. Jerry has some interest in flipping Jace. And it looks like that's where he'll start. So time to draw and discard. The Telepath Unbound will be with us in just a moment. Looks like there goes Reeve's soul. Now Bloodstained Mire. You mentioned Achievement Unlocked. Now, yeah, just can just focus on getting Battlelands. Might be time for Slumgar here. Jace will start by taking up. And now there is Slumgar the Drifting Death. A great answer to Hangerback Walker. Don't forget Radiant Purge and Utter End in hand there for Thompson. There's a fourth land for Bridges finally. And here's a Siege Rhino. So it'll take a little bit of damage to cast it, but he'll gain that life back. Thompson's going to fall down to 14 no matter what. But now Thompson in full control here. Obzon Charm in the graveyard ready to exile that Siege Rhino. Slumgar online. 
And then you see the cards in the graveyard. Here's an attack. Not going to get a lot done here. Yep. Going to block the hanger back walker, which will make a 1 1, and then Slumgar's going to get to swallow those up. Aya! Trigger. Kill all those 1 1s. Leave you with a siege right now. Jace is going down. Hobbs on charms all around. But well, Jerry wants cards. He doesn't have any interest in killing the Rhino. A really bad sign for Bridges. N not great. Well, he, are, he does have Radiant Purge, yeah. so that'll take care of it just fine. Lumbering Falls is the land there for Thompson. Siege Rhino the draw. And Siege Rhino will the battlefield. Thompson is going to fall to nine. There's a Cedar Glade. And a lot of Thompson's uh, removal. I don't know if this is on accident or on purpose, but a lot of it focuses on exiling. I have a feeling that's on purpose. <laughs> Just that's my best guess. <laughs> Time to turn up the heat here. Attack for six, Lumbering Falls. Our first activation. Yep. And that's going to do it for this game. Jerry Thompson going to tie things up here against Yusuf Bridges. Five color, bring the light knobs on aggro. Getting ready for game number three. I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. Might be a uh, controversial, unpopular opinion. Got to say it anyway. Yeah. I think Bridges really needs to consider boarding out hanger back Walker. Seems so slow in this matchup. And Jerry has so much removal that answers it as cleanly as possible. I don't think that's an accident either. Yeah. With the way the, man, excuse me, with the, way the removal has been set up. A lot of clean answers. Salumgar in the deck to clean up the tokens. Yeah. Just does not seem great to me here. And it's a very slow threat, and Bridges needs to be the aggressor. Yeah, you know, he does have some aggressive draws available there in the wild. Siege Rhino, Anafenza, stuff like that. He, he is kind of in this weird spot where he's definitely, I was on aggro, but a little bit more mid-rangey. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking he needs to try yeah. to gear things? If Bridges wants to bring in the evolutionary leap, then that changes the equation quite a bit because Hanger Back Walker and Evolutionary Leap are so potent together. But if he's not on that plan, I don't think Hanger Back Walker is particularly good against Thompson's deck. It didn't look good that game. No. That's for sure. Now, we'll take a look at the sideboards here. We'll start with Bridges, who's got three Ration Clerics, three Duresses, two Despise, a Valor Stance, two Silk Reps, two Utter Ends, and then two Evolutionary Leaps. It's just kind of tough, because I don't know what you want to board the Hanger Back Walkers out for. Well, I, I think that the Evolutionary Leaps, the Utter Ends, the Valorous Dance, and the Discard Spells are all fine. So he's got a lot of cards he could potentially bring in. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, if he, again, if he wants to bring in Evolutionary Leap, I think you have to leave in Hanger Pack Walker. I think the, that mixture of cards is too potent. But if he thinks Evolutionary Leap is too slow in the matchup, or if he thinks that Jerry can lock out the board anyway, uh, I think Hanger Pack Walker needs to be in consideration to be boarded out. Oh, what's Jerry have on this side? I know his sideboard's a little spicy this weekend. Two Duress, three Radiant Flames, two Disdainful Stroke, two in case Nice, a Slumgar's Command, a Slumgar the Drifting Death, a Radiant Purge, and an Offense of the Foremost, two Obnixilis Re Reunited. I think Obnixilis, the Radiant Purge we saw, I think uh, Slumgar the Drifting Deck and Slumgar's Command are both fine here. Just cards for, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say aggressive matchups. They all seem good in matchups where your opponent is the aggressor. He's the one attacking you but the games aren't that fast. Bridges is a little bit bigger and a little bit slower than most beatdown decks. I think he may have put Jerry on the play. Okay, never mind. I would have been very surprised. Yeah. There's a wooded foothills past the turn back. Oh, there's Air of the Wilds. That's a good start. A little bit more aggressive than the Hanger Back Walker. Thompson going to search up a Smoldering Marsh with the Wooded Foothills. It's another card that's been just kind of hanging out for a little while. Yep. Good two drop. Actually pretty easy to cast. You want to build three and four color decks, you know, with a, with a core color or two core colors, 
splashing a lot of, of, of different stuff. You want a lot of single mana requirements. Air of the Wild seems great, and a lot of the cards you're splashing for are going to turn on Ferocious. There's Jace. And basic Island on the way. Air of the Wilds come across here for two. Top's going to fall down to 17. Let's see what the follow-up is here. Assuming that there is a follow-up for Bridges. It is. Another copy of the Wilds. But I think he might have to stop there. And he does. So over to Thompson. Utter and the draw. Jay's pretty great in Jerry's deck. Pretty easy to cast on turn two. And smooths out a lot of the draws. Yes. Gonna start by activating Jace. Crux of Fate the draw. Might want to hold on to that one. Depends on the, the mana considerations. Not the easiest card to cast, but very powerful against Bridge's deck. Utter End about to be discarded. Windswept Heath is the land. Now we go over to Bridge's. Can he find land number three? He does. It's a copy of Atlanta War Waste. It's a big deal. I believe there might even be an NFNs in hand. And if that's the case, Ferocious is online. And Thompson cannot currently cast Obzon Charm because he has an island in play. Mm -hmm. Just going to pass the turn back, however, Will Bridges. Does have an offensive, but elected not to cast. It does have an Obzon Charm, however. So Thompson's going to search up a basic planes, fall down to 11. Battle lands under the battlefield untapped moving forward. Windswept Heath to draw. A Jace activation. Polluted Delta is what Jerry found. Looks like that'll be discarded. And Jace will flip. The Telepath Unbound has arrived. Starts at five. We'll see where it goes. Looks like Languish is on the way. Got to get a Sunken Hollow. Jason moved to six, pass the turn back. Time for an Obzon Charm. Bridges will draw two cards at the cost of four life. Two from the Charm, two from the lands. But that's the least of Bridges' issues right now. It's boards clean on Thompson's side. He's got Jason play with, with really juicy stuff to flash back. Utter end may have been the draw here for you, Seth. There's a forest. Feels like Jace's only vulnerability is against red decks. Even in matchups where your opponent's attacking, if they don't have cheap removal to handle Jace, Jace still feels excellent. Top's going to fall down to seven from the Rhino. Well, he drew a Rhino of his own. And now, wow, oh, boy. Guilt Leaf Winnower. Oh, boy. This is another one that I think we might be seeing more of show up. This is a fun of. It's pretty fun for Jerry right now. I mean, destroy target, not of creature whose power and toughness are not equal. Four does not equal five. Bye-bye, Siege Rhino. And Menace is actually a pretty, pretty relevant keyword. Another, uh, this is another card that, in the face of Gideon, could be a lot more powerful. Four power creatures that aren't easy to block could be on an uptick. Siege right out of the draw here for Thompson. Jace going up. Looks like it's going to target the air. Here's an attack for four. Now Thompson looking to turn the corner with Siege Rhinos. He's going to come up to 10. Bridges will end up taking three more. And very important for, for Thompson to be the aggressor now and get a move on because of Evolutionary Leap on the other side of the table. Yeah. Hard to manage the board. The way you beat this card is just beat down your opponent while they're trying to set this up. Yeah, as we've seen with Michael Majors a little bit earlier in the day, Evolutionary Leap with enough time, it'll grind you down. So you don't want to play against that nonsense for very long. Bridges will draw. Den Protector. I 
Yeah, things have gotten pretty tough here for Yusuf. Yusuf Bridges here with 25 lands. A lot of people who played odds on aggro prior to the rotation advocated 26. And there are no temples in the deck anymore. Yep. And given how much mana Bridges deck requires to function, I feel like 26 lands is where he needs to be at the minimum. You do get some creature lands in there now too in Shambling events, so. And more incentive to play with more lands. Yeah. Gideon gonna bring an ally. You can't port over the same mana base as you were playing with last time. Oh, and no, no, Temple, no. Temples had this, it wasn't noticeable, but it was this big variance reducing effect on the game. You just had steady draws more often. Now without those cards, if your mana base is off by a little bit, you're gonna feel it a lot more than you used to. The Winnower and the Rhino were coming in. And if Bridges takes this, he'll get cleaned up by Siege Rhino's active, uh, excuse me, enters the battlefield trigger. And the Guilt Leaf Winnower, well, it's gotta be double blocked because of Menace. Menace feels kinda tacked on there, but it's real relevant right now. I don't know, Menace plus Necrotal seems like a combo to me. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know. Not tacked on, that's a real keyword on a, on a creature that comes into play and kills something. Siege Rhino gonna get blocked, there'll be some trample damage here. Thompson will have to lose the Siege Rhino because of Death Touch. I think that was. Uh, oh, no, you're right. No, you're shrunk. Yeah, never mind. Excuse me. And there's another Rhino. Bridges down to one. Picked up another copy of Gideon, but there's no way out of it for this one. And survey the board here briefly, but Toss was getting beaten down early. Stabilized with a Languish. Jace flipped, and had a pretty smooth sailing from there. It's very easy to look at this game and say, you know, and the, the second game that we saw as well and say, well, Bridges missed some early land drops. And part of that's true. But I think that Bridges' deck just does not have enough lands in it for what it's trying to do. 25 sounds like a lot for a beatdown deck, but when you have a bunch of four mana plays, you have mana sinks like Evolutionary League and Hangerback Walker, Den Protector. He's got Wingmate Rock in the main deck. I think you just need to be playing with more lands than this, especially now that the deck does not have temples. Pretty important that you get your land drops on time, too. This deck is hungry. This deck does not do very much until it's got, you know, four or five mana in play. Then yeah. it really starts to hum. And in the games we watched, it just took Bridges way too long to get off the ground, and Thompson was able to swallow him up with some removal spells and a smooth curve. Jerry Thompson going to win this match here over use of Bridges. Two games to one. Five color bring the light moves on to seven and one. That means Thompson will be into day number two. 